Hi, it's uh, Steve here from Mills Motion, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bobblehead meme. That's where you sort of do one of those face replacements with like a gigantic head of someone else. Um, so what you're going to learn in this, I'm going to do this tutorial tutorial in Final Cut Pro X. However, all of the skills are relevant for Final Cut Pro X and other programs. So what you're going to learn is how to layer your, layer your clips, how to crop around a clip um, or a photo, and then how to keyframe your um, your photo, so that will be the head. Now, keyframing is when you tell the computer where to move that image to over a period of time. So that can be a bit tedious, but um, once you know what you're doing, you just you just uh, go ahead and do it, um, and you can get some pretty cool results. So um, let's jump straight into this tutorial. I'm going to go to new uh, project and. Uh, we'll just call this bobble head meme and then I want to bring down my base clip this is the clip that I want to put the uh, the head over the top of and I found one here which should do the job quite nicely it's got um, someone dancing with a small child at a wedding I just want about 10 seconds of the clip and there we go so the, she, her head stays in the clip pretty much the whole time and no one crosses over the front of it so that kind of makes my life a bit easier we highlight what we want we then drag that down into the timeline and we will zoom in onto our clip and now I want to get uh, the photo that I want to put over the top of it so the head that I want to put over the top of it so I want to put this baby head over the top of that lady dancing there so get this uh, photo and drag that out over the whole thing so now we want to crop it out <clears throat> when Final Cut Pro first came out they didn't have any crop features or what they did have was was pretty ordinary uh, they've now got some fancy new mask features so come over here to um, let's just say that's been clicked off if you can't see your panel over to the bottom right you'll need to click onto this button here see where my mouse my, 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 oh, where my mouse is sorry <laughs> to show your effects browser click on that and then scroll down and click on masks and then what we want to do is we want to click on the draw mask tool and drag that onto the photo uh, that we want to cut out, the one that we want to take the head from. Let's drag that on, drop it there, and nothing's going to happen, but... Um, excellent. So now it uh, will tell us, click to add a control point. So now we are going to click around the head that we want to use in the video. Click, click, click. This is a, one of those tedious things, but... Um, yeah, that's part of filmmaking. Then finally, you click back on the first dot that you did, and that will that will close that loop, and you'll get your cropped head. Okay, so as you can see, the head's a different color to everything else. At the end, I'm going to do a little color correct, but um, but for now, we'll move straight on to the next step. So let's get out of that. Um, and we'll come back to our control panel. Now, if you can't see your control panel, I'm just going to click that off. If you can't see your control panel, we're going to be spending a fair bit of time in that, uh, in this video. So if you can't see it, see where my mouse is hovering at the moment, over on the right side of the screen there. Um, it's cool. It's called your, your inspector. I call it the control panel, but it's, it's really called your inspector. So click on that, and that will bring up all the different properties of your selected clip. I'm going to click off so I don't see that mask. Oh, actually, let's just tidy up that mask before I go any further. So I've clicked off that mask. You can see it's a bit messy. So click on the drop-down menu for the draw mask and then click on the shape type and turn it to B-spline. It's nice and um, it's nice and smooth. And then you can bring your feather back inwards a little bit and that will um, that'll just make the, the, the crop a bit tighter around that uh, around the head. Awesome. Now that will do. 
So what we want to do is we want to click on the top layer, the one with the head, and then we've opened up our inspector, and we want to come up here into the transform section. We're going to be spending a fair bit of time in this section, um, getting the head to be in the right size, in the right spot. So let's do this. Okay, so now what we want to do, okay, clicking and making sure that we've got the head selected, come over to our transform area, you see there's this square here, click on that, that will allow us to see the um, that clip and some things about it. Now what we want to do is we want to adjust our anchor point so that the head, so that the chin on this head here is at that center circle. This is going to make our life so much easier when we're keyframing it. So we use the anchor properties and um, X will move it from side to side. Okay, and then Y will move it up and down. Awesome. Now what that will do, that now means that when I rotate this clip using the rotate properties, it will hinge upon the bottom of the head and that way if I want to keyframe and make the head bobble from side to side all I have to do is twist that rotation if these were still on zero um, if that was still on zero and I tried to rotate it it wouldn't rotate at the uh, at the head. Uh, it's not that bad because it's not too far to one side. But you'll find that rather than just just twisting the head from side to side, the whole head would then be lifted up and down. So it's important that uh, that the anchor point of your video, of, uh, sorry, of the head is at the chin. So make sure the chin is at that center point. And that will make keyframing a whole lot easier. So I'll be honest, I'm not too flash at keyframing, but that's what we're going to jump into next, and you'll find out what I mean. It can be a bit tedious, but it's an important part of filmmaking. Okay, so we've got our playback stick over at the start. Actually, let's scale this up, make this slightly more obnoxiously large. Okay, excellent. Now let's position our head on that first shot. On the first frame, sorry. <laughs> okay, oh, this is too much fun. Awesome. Okay, so we've just set it up and we, we've, sorry, I didn't really explain what I was doing. I was using the position parameters here and the rotation and the scale to, um, to alter where that head is and the size and the rotation of it. What we're going to do now is we're going to set keyframes. So can you see where the mouse is now over at the right side of the screen? That little tab thing has just popped up and it says add a keyframe. So on the top three of those parameters, the scale, the rotation and the position, I'm going to click on that add a keyframe. It's going to highlight. I'm going to click another one, add a keyframe and add a keyframe. Awesome. So what that says is at the start of the clip, this is what the parameters are, are going to be. So for the position parameters, it says at this point in the clip, uh, this is what the parameters will be. From then on, we can then set new keyframes throughout the clip and the computer will change the parameters over time and over frames to suit what you've set it to. So let's open up this uh, so right click on your top clip and select show video animation and this will allow us to see but at the start of the clip there there's a little triangle which appears that's called a keyframe point um, so because I clicked on the triangle over at the right side of the screen that little keyframe point has appeared and what we want to do is all throughout the clip is set new keyframe points to match where the head of our uh, of that dancing lady is um, so let's do this um, you can do this a number of ways you can have a big gap or a small gap between the key points um, I'm going to sort of do a bit of a medium one um, and we'll see how it comes up. If I need to set more key points um, in, in between where I've set them, then I can do that later too. 
awesome. So with the with our playback right at the start of the video, I'm going to press the right arrow on my keyboard. The top clip selected. I want to go four keyframes further into the video. One, two, three, four. And now I want to readjust where that head is using uh, using the parameters over here. So I've moved four clips in, and now I'm going to move this slightly to the left and slightly down. Sweet. And if I want, I can add some rotation too. Now what you'll notice is over here, a new triangle has been placed in place. So because the computer has recognized that between the first keyframe that I made and this point in the video, I've changed the location of that, uh, of that head and it has automatically created an animation between the two. As you can see, it then moves itself down between those two spots in the video. Okay, so what you want to do is repeat those steps all throughout your video. You want to create new keyframes every few frames and um, and do that all throughout your clip. Okay, so I've made it all the way through the 16 second clip and have um, animated where the head needs to be at every point in the video. And this is what it looks like. A little bit shaky at the start as I was getting the hang of it, but um, it starts to stick a bit better throughout the second part of the video. And she's all right. We got there in the end. So yes, a bit tedious. If you do want to get fancy, you can research how to do motion tracking inside of Final Cut Pro X. That's another way of making the head stick and rotate in the right place. Um, however, I find motion tracking, there's a bit of an art to that. And often there's some barriers um, that can make it difficult. So our video is all animated. Now I just want to do some final touches. Um, I just deleted something there because I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so there was a question, I think it was from Alonzo, uh, regarding changing the audio on a clip. Uh, so that, that, that's really, really easy to do that. So for instance, um, if you want to change the audio on an, an existing clip, so your video has got some audio attached to it, uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way is you can bring your mouse over that clip which has the audio on it. And when you hover your mouse over that bar in the middle of the video, um, you'll see a little box will pop up which, which asks if you would like to adjust the volume. So drag up and down that bar and uh, drag it all the way down to the bottom and that will completely mute the audio that was uh, that was in that video. So that's, that's cool. And if you'd like to drag in some more, uh, some new audio, you can just Heck, you can drag in your audio files from the Finder or from iTunes or by clicking on that audio icon there. You can scroll through all of the audio files that you've got on your computer and drag them into uh, into the timeline. Um, there is something which I would like to do just, some, just to finish off this and to make that head blend in a little bit better. Click on the Effects Browser and then click on Color and then drag the color correction effect onto your top layer. Select your top layer and then click on the arrow underneath your color correction effect. Now, again, if you can't see that, then you might need to select your inspector to open up, um, to open up that panel. Click on that arrow there to show correction, show the color correction tool, and then come over to exposure. We want to make this head blend in a little bit better. Um, so across the board, we want to bring down. Whoop, we want to bring down the overall brightness. I think. Yeah. So these, uh, this middle one represents the midtones. The far right represents yeah, those highlights. We need to come down for sure. So I might drop those highlights down. So the far right represents the highlights push up the mid-tones a little bit. I might push up the shadows. There we go. 
and then I'll come across to the color tab. It looks like we've got a bit much. Um, let's have a look. I kind of feel like we've got a bit too much red, so I might want to boost the yellow. Yeah, the yellowy greens. Boom. So that's just a just a quick way to do a bit of a color correct to make the head blend in a little bit more rather than it standing out like the bright um, image that it was before. And you can also drop that saturation. I think the saturation is a bit a bit overdone, especially in those mid tones. Awesome. So click back out of that, and you can toggle and see the difference here by turning on and off that color correction effect. So that's what it was before. And that's what it's like after having corrected it. So it just sort of makes it blend in and sort of look a little bit more like the original clip. Tell you what, I think that's uh, that's almost all of it. Um, and finally, if you would like to turn it into a meme with the text bars at the top and the bottom, um, one way to do that is to head over to millsmotion.com. Um, and check out my how to make a video meme tutorial and there I have got some text bars that uh, that you can use awesome so inside of that I've got some different size text bars I also have a, a singular bar that you can drop over the top um, the text bars can sometimes I don't know that's not too bad and that will give you a spot to put your text in the video so there you have it that's how you make one of those bobblehead videos uh, you can use them in memes or just for the fun of it i'm steve from mills motion thank you so much for watching and if you appreciated the video be sure to hit like and subscribe for more great tutorials i'm steve from mills motion wishing you all the best with your next video project thanks so much for watching <laughs>